most books come in book jackets. This is the first time I've met an author who comes in her own book jacket. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to welcome Nancy Clamorin to the program. She's an author and clearly artist, and we'll talk about that in a second, too. But tell me about this book jacket you made for yourself. Well, <laughs> um, it, it sort of goes along with some of the art that I right. made. But this one was primarily, I, I usually go to the Santa Barbara Writers Conference every year. And uh, there's a cocktail party out by the pool, and I'm never in any of the pictures. So. Oh, I guarantee you! Uh, I so guarantee you were in the pictures. <laughs> this year, I made up for all all those times. <laughs> yeah, marketing whiz as well. So um, you've written three books, and I want I want to kind of get into that. Um, but you weren't oh, you you didn't spend your career as a writer. You didn't have this aspirations early on in life as to be a writer, right? Right. I was um, I was in um, marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, I just got an idea for a story, so I tried to get a bunch of my friends that I knew to write it, and they said, your story, you write it. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was too big of a project, so I started writing short stories. Mm -hmm. And then one um, session in a workshop, I was reading a portion of a short story. And the teacher says, so what are you doing for the next four years? Because that's a novel. <laughs> I said, no, I don't do that. <laughs> he planted the seed. About a year later, I thought, I'll give it a try. And it turned into uh, this book called The Clock of Life. And right. it uh, ultimately won uh, five awards. Yeah, so yeah. that so and the that, background on that is it's it's set in the South. It's set with a with a young man who befriends an African American, and that kind of friend. It, it kind of talks about the turmoil of the civil rights and all of that in that story, right? Yes, and and the boy's father had been killed in the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, and so the the history of the civil rights movement and the Vietnam War. Right. Are woven through the story, right. and, and how a, they, you know, how they affect an entire right. town. And the and the great way about delivering that story is you don't have to tell the whole story; you just tell through those characters, right? And they kind of it kind of resonates with people when they hear when it, it personalizes it. Yes, yeah, yes, it's yes. It's amazing. And so now your latest book, Love and Protest, is a little bit, you know, it's like it, it starts with kind of a fun find or interesting find and from a from a secondhand shop, and they, somebody finds a, a book or a diary in a drawer, right? That's right. That's right. Harper um, finds a diary, and it was written by a girl her same age, but it was written in 1967. Mm -hmm. And that girl who wrote the diary, she went uh, out to San Francisco for the summer of love. Mm -hmm. So not unlike the first novel, she gets involved in the anti-war movement out there. The girl who finds the diary mm -hmm. gets pretty wrapped up in um, Libby is the girl who wrote it. And she finds purpose in joining uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's pretty much about the fact that everyday people can get involved and make a difference. Mm -hmm. so. Well, so someone who didn't ever think they were to be an author, right. who didn't had no inkling to even write the story, wanted to give it away to somebody else, this right. seed has kind of grown in you. You're in your third book now. Is this your second act? I mean, do you feel like this is who you are now? Yes. Yeah. What's that well, transformation? You know what? I hadn't... Yeah. What's that transformation been like? Well, it it has been, you know, like a whole new definition. Mm -hmm becoming part of the author's you know, life or a writer's life and, mm -hmm. and now having all sorts of writer friends. <laughs> you know, so you listened to that little seed that was planted way back when and it, it's turned into a whole new thing. I did, I did. <laughs> and I have, um, what I did was I took some of those short stories and put them in this collection the book, called, right? yeah, like the flies on the patio. Mm -hmm. and, and there's, I think, maybe 11 of the stories that I had fiddled around with for um, years. <laughs> I think a lot of people, you know, they'll have, oh, I think I have this idea for a story. And I've met people who have said that, you know, kind of thing. How does it hit you and what do you do about it? Being someone who does something about it, do you, do you start writing down just little notes to yourself and maybe this will be something, maybe it won't? Yeah, it's, you know, everybody does it differently. Mm -hmm. I went uh, and took a class in writing mm -hmm. at UCI, creative writing. And that stimulated 
the short story and taught me. Uh, it's just, just know it's hard. And, you know, <laughs> no, it's not going to be good the first time you right. write it. Right. And but rewriting just, is yeah. writing. That's the rewriting is the process I've heard of every in, in terms of screenwriters, authors, anything like that. Rewriting is the, really the process where you figure it all out. You go, oh, that didn't work here. That you know. Right. And well, yeah, what are apples doing? And you know. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why not even go that direction? <laughs> so you're not only an author, but you're an artist, and you have turned gl garbage into glam, as I kind of previewed. Yes. About <laughs> yes. So what what inspired you to start doing yet a third act in your life? <laughs> Well, the, um, I had always made art out of stuff I collected on walks, okay. you know, down by the beach. I did a lot of things with um, palm, palm uh, cloth, okay. you know, wrapping, making um, uh, wall hangings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just the collecting stuff and making something out of it turned into um, fashion. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, I got them off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw some of your things were really good. You had this one kind of like the fish netting that some vegetables and fruits come into, and you made a whole outfit out of that. And, That's uh, right. It's, it's some it's some it's some wild stuff. What what made you think that this was a not a, not 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 a bad idea? But what made you think this is an idea that can work and I can I can do this? You're not a dressmaker either, were you? No, ever? <laughs> no. And and the, and the my, and my first tries. <laughs> are not here. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first draft of any of these. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, these, these are the final drafts. And um, I, the lottery ticket one was the um, most challenging. There's 1,600 lottery tickets in the skirt. And I folded them origami. Oh, my goodness. That one. I recruited my husband, and in the evenings we'd watch a movie and, he said, and we'd Never fold. Again. <laughs> <laughs> we better and be, one of these he, better be a winner. <laughs> he started. I know, I know, I know. It, but I, I did end up going to CVS and digging through the wastebasket next oh, really? to the lottery tickets. I was going to gonna ask you, did you buy? Oh, those are <laughs> no. next question. Did you buy all those tickets yourself? Your husband must have been furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were uh, gifted. We'll say <laughs> <laughs> gifted, picked up along the way, and part of your theme of turning uh, trash into treasure, so there you go. Yes. Um, do, you, do you theme them out? Do you, have a, do you like name the dresses? Do you say this is the this dress and this is, represents this? Yes, I have. Um, each one of my pieces is on a mannequin. Uh, the mannequins are recycled <laughs> uh, fr from a company that was uh, had them on Craigslist. Okay. So I name them. I name every one of my girls. I call them my girls. And um, so that in turn becomes, you know, what the, what the uh, um, outfit is all right, well, called. She's an author. She's an artist. She's a dressmaker. She's a jacket maker. She <laughs> does it all. Nancy Clamorin, <laughs> resident here of Laguna Woods Village. Thank you so much for joining us. Her latest books can be found on Amazon, anywhere books are sold. Love and Protest is the latest one. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michael. We come back. We've got some tickets for you for the Festival of the Arts. Stay with us.